Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very complex equation. We have i to the power z equals 1 plus i and we're going to be solving for z values. Now first of all think about it. You, could, you probably know powers of i, right? i to the first, i to the second, which is negative 1. That's the most important thing, right? i to the third, so on and so forth. But those are integer powers. What about rational powers like i to the power one half or i to the power two thirds? How would you define those? Now think about i to the power one half. You could basically write it as square root of i, but there are two square roots. You have to be careful and they are opposites. But one of the square roots of i, you know, is square root of two over two plus square root of two over two i. If you square, you're going to get i. But we're not getting that number, we're getting 1 plus i instead. So is there a way to raise i to a power and then get 1 plus i? So it's equivalent to basically adding 1 to the number. Let's go ahead and find out. And later on in another video, I'm thinking about generalizing this scenario, take a complex number, raise it to another complex number, and you do get another complex number. Okay, let's see how this goes. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and talk about an identity which is used for exponenti exponentiation. I was going to say about complex exponentiation. So the, suppose W and Z are complex numbers. W to the power Z is defined as E to the power Z ln W. And we'll talk about the ln of the complex number too. But this is how we can define it with the exponential. And ln of a complex number can be defined as ln of the absolute value of w, which is, by the way, a real log, plus i times the argument of w. And the argument of w obviously has infinitely many values, so we're going to talk about that as well. So let's go ahead and start by converting i to the z to e to the power z ln i, and then changing the 1 plus i to polar form, which is square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. And this comes from the very fact that if you think about this number in the argon plane, it's basically going to look like this. You have 1 plus i, so it's kind of like a 1 comma 1, and the angle it makes is going to be pi over 2 radians, right? And of course, square root of 2 is just going to be its absolute value. So it's kind of like r e to the i theta, which is the polar form, right? Cool. But why is it only pi over 4? It's not only pi over 4, but that's going to be the principal argument. In other words, the smallest value, right? So we can go ahead and do the following. We can just write it this way, or we can definitely write it in a more general form, like i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Adding multiples of 2 pi is basically going to bring you to the exact same point. Add 2 pi, subtract 2 pi, add 4 pi, so on and so forth. So this is what 1 plus i is equal to, but 1 plus i at the same time is equal to i to the power z, which is this. So we get e to the power z ln i, which is i to the power z, equals square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, and n is an integer, positive or negative, doesn't matter, right? Infinitely many values. Now let's go ahead and talk about what z ln i would be, or ln i. But before we get to that, obviously, at this point, you want to natural log both sides, and that's going to give you z ln i equals ln square root of 2 plus i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. It's basically the logarithm of a complex number because z ln i is also a complex number, so on and so forth. Now, we kind of need to figure out what ln i is. Let's go ahead and find that next ln i is basically ln absolute value of i plus i times the argument of i, which is pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Why is the argument of i pi over 2? Because if you, again, uh, plot it on the argon plane, you're going to notice that it's denoted by 0 comma i. It's an imaginary number, no real parts and its distance from 0 is 1. So this is going to be 1, ln 1 is 0. We're talking about a real ln. Okay, 
Make sense? So ln i would then be i times, because this whole thing will be zero, i times pi over two plus two pi k. In other words, ln i is a multiple of pi over two. Make sense? Okay. Or I should probably say it the other way around. It's a multiple of i, right? Some, some k times i, makes sense? Or maybe m times i, because we used the k already. Great, let's go ahead and put it together. So we're gonna now replace this ln i with this. That's gonna give us z times i times pi over two plus two pi k equals ln square root of two plus i times pi over four plus two pi n. n and k are integers, by the way, k is an integer too. I forgot to say that, but they don't have to be the same. They could be different and we'll talk about what happens if they are the same, right? Or for special values, what happens? So from here, uh, we could basically divide both sides by this thing, and we're gonna get an i, but I wanna get rid of the i first. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative i first, because that'll eliminate the i. Notice that this is negative i squared, which is positive one. So now we get z times pi over two plus two pi k, and then on the right hand side, we're multiplying everything by negative i. Again, this negative i will be multiplied by the positive i, giving us a positive one. So we can go ahead and write that first, pi over four plus two pi n, and then minus i ln root two. And then finally, by division, we find that z is equal to pi over four plus two pi n, divided by pi over two plus two pi k minus ln root two divided by pi over two plus two pi k and all of that is multiplied by i. In other words, we get the real part and the imaginary part and they are separated. Make sense? So that will be the general general solution if n and k are integers. And of course, we wanna look at the some particular solutions. What happens if n and k are both zero? then we get something much, much simpler. These two are gonna disappear. We're gonna end up with pi over four divided by pi over, pi over two, which is one half, and then minus i times, and here you're gonna get ln root two, and this is gonna be zero, pi over two will be flipped, and you're gonna get something like two ln root two divided by pi. And of course, we could simplify this a little bit, put the two here as a power, square root of two squared is two, so from here z is gonna be in the simplest form, hopefully, one half minus i times ln two over pi. Make sense? So this would be one of the solutions, obviously, probably the simplest looking one. And now we can go ahead and actually check our work with this, because that would be easy. i to the z then be i to the power one half minus i times ln two over pi. And then I can go ahead and write the i as e to the power i times pi over two, and then multiply by this exponent, right? And then distributing is gonna give us e to the power i times pi over four minus, and that minus basically indicates that I am going to, uh, you know, uh, subtract it, but let's go ahead and do it first to work. i squared is gonna give me negative one, but that's a positive one. And then pi is gonna cancel out and we're gonna get ln two over two. And obviously we can kind of write it as e to the power i times pi over four, multiply by e to the power ln two over two, but I can kind of write it as one half. e to the power ln two is two, two power one half is root two, and e to the power i pi over four is cosine pi over four plus i times sine pi over four, as you know from Euler's formula, and then this is gonna become one over root two plus i times one over root, and when you distribute the root two, you're gonna get one plus i. So e to the z, is one plus i, our solution checks, at least one of them, right? And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.